Okay. I have cleaned up and saved as a PNG my creature, made it as, as good as I could with the time I had. And here it is as a PNG file, which has no background. So if I open it up in preview here on a Mac, you'll see it has a light gray background. And its resolution is around 10 by 10 inches by 350 pixels print. So if I view it at actual size, I'm gonna see the quality of those individual pixels, all those different textures going together. And it might show me little, little things that could still be improved, but this is, this is good, especially for the time we have moving into the next project. So now I've got a nice in-focus creature. Now I want to put it into an environment. So I can close it in Photoshop, make sure I've saved it as a PSD file as well as a PNG. So I have my PSD here. I have my PNG here. PNG is an online format, so I mark it orange. PSD is the working format, so that stays marked green. The setting I'm going to put it into is my assignment one fantasy landscape. But you can also use, I mean, it's the pre preferable for you to use your fantasy landscape that you created. And I'm going to open up my assignment one PSD so I have all the layers because that makes it a little bit easier. I already have foreground, middle ground, and background layers that I can put my creature into. So here's my PSD. Remember my PSD still has some extra space because I didn't crop it until I made my JPEG. But you're also allowed to put your fantasy creature into a found environment that you find, if that fits your creature and your story better. Okay, so fantasy creature, I take my PNG and I just drag and drop it into my assignment one PSD and it comes in at its native resolution. That doesn't mean I need to keep it at this scale. And so I'm gonna think, how do I wanna integrate this creature into this environment? I think I wanna sink it in the water a little bit. I think I will keep it in the foreground. I wonder if I flip it horizontally if that would be more interesting. No, not really. All right, so the first thing I'll usually try is I'll start moving the layer with my creature, which I'll mark with a yellow, just so I can always know what the, my creature layer is. I do that by right clicking by the eyeball and choosing a color. I'm gonna start moving this down through my layers. So I can use command left bracket for this, or I can just click and drag the layer. So if I move it behind my foreground layers, it looks like that. If I move it into my far background layers, it looks like that and then it pretty much completely disappears. But what if I was pitching a, a Marvel concept? I want a galactic level threat, something like the size of Galactus attacking a planet. That's what my creature is designed for. Then it makes sense for it to be in the far background. I'll make a duplicate of it and I'll grow it. And you can see how this might work, right? It kind of looming over the far background. And then I would need to push it back into the atmosphere in different ways. So you get to pick where it goes in your landscape. I'm going to go ahead and move mine up. I like it in the middle ground, but I don't have any really strong foreground element. But because this is my, my composition, I could always change it around. And I could create a foreground, right? To go in front of it. Because it's the, the best tool you have for integrating creatures into environments 
is usually overlapping. So now I have the water overlapping the feet, and I have this overlapping my creature. And I think I like that. But then I have this seam that the that is being exposed by not having this anymore. So then I can try moving my creature to cover that seam up a little bit. And maybe growing my creature a little bit. Not too much because you don't want to lose resolution from its native size. But yeah, that seems to help. Kind of like seeing their foot though as well. So maybe even make it a little bit bigger. I can tilt it slightly. I can even warp it. All our compositing skills. So I can put its foot back here and place its hand where I want it. and show it being overlapped by this iceberg in the foreground. So ideally your creature will take up at least 25% of the landscape. Sometimes that means you need to crop your landscape down, but that's just because I don't want your creature to be really hard to find in your landscape. I don't want it to be smaller than 25% of your landscape. Okay, so that's just placing the creature. Now we have to think about lighting. We have to think about shadows. We have to think about coloring. So let's do the easiest stuff first. I'm going to right click and rasterize once I've placed my creature. I'm gonna go ahead and crop down the image so I don't get distracted by things that aren't gonna be there in the end. So I'm going to find my final composition this way. And that might show me things I want to change. For instance, I think I want to transform this iceberg so that its bottom edge works a little bit better. Before I crop it, I think I want to squeeze this with command T and hold down shift, not caps lock, shift. So I get that bottom edge in there. Like so. And then I'm going to crop it, find the composition that really complements my creature. Sometimes you have to zoom in to get a little bit more control of the crop tool. So I think that composition works pretty well for my creature. It's looking very, very colorful and bright in a very cold environment. Now, let me see. Now that it is rasterized, I can start doing my basic adjustments. So first I'm going to start with levels and I'm going to play with the midtones and I'm going to see should it be brighter in the midtones or darker. And in this environment, it actually needs to be a little bit brighter. All that snow and ice is reflecting a lot of light back. And so the contrast between things is not all that strong, even in the foreground. So I'm pushing the midtones quite a bit brighter. Do I want to increase the shadows? Not really. Maybe even limit 
but I might limit the highlights a little bit. Do I want to limit the shadows? No. So maybe I'll deepen the shadows just a tiny, the tiniest bit. And do I want to brighten the highlights? No. Maybe the tiniest bit. So going back in history, you can see what levels does. That helps it sit into that environment a little bit. And then my favorite tool, of course, is color balance. That's going to make a big difference. No longer are we kind of flat lit, but we're in this kind of bluish haze, right? So I'm going to push a lot of cyans and blues into the midtones. Even in the highlights, I might. Push their cyans a little bit. No, I'm going to actually push their reds a little bit. And their yellows. And then in the shadows, maybe push the blues and the cyans a bit. Okay, so that's, this is what levels did from this to this. And now the color balance takes it from this to this. That makes a huge difference to it, looking like it belongs in this environment. And then hue saturation. Hue saturation is important as a direct adjustment because my creature is more saturated than the setting. So I'm going to take that saturation overall down a little bit. And then there are certain colors that just don't seem to work, like the reds and the yellows. So I can specify the reds and take its saturation down so that it looks kind of like frozen red. Frostbitten. And then same thing with the yellows. You can take the yellow saturation down of that bill. There we go. Now all of that is looking more believable. And that's just all on my initial layer. So a big change doing levels, <coughs> then color balance, then hue saturation. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, next, there's the lighting direction. And this is where dodge and burn can really help. There's also the shadows that might be cast on my creature. And then there's also the way my creature might be effect affecting this environment. So in order to do dodge and burn, we're going to do what's called um, an, a non-destructive overlay layer. But I'm going to do that in the next video. So before that, let me think of where this creature is actually touching my landscape. Where is their physical interaction? And my creature is in the water and touching the water. So I'm going to expect the water to break a little bit, for there to be a surface break in the water. And because this is a compositing exercise, what I can do with that is find something that works for a water break in what I already have. And sure enough, I've got little breaks in the water right here with this glacier. So if I go to that reference, I can steal that. That kind of break in the water. I can duplicate it with Command J and put it on top of my creature and then move it down to where my creature's foot is going into the water. Whoops. There it is. So this is a little surface break, and then I can erase around it. I'm going to do 100% opacity first. And then I'm going to lower that opacity on the brush once I've gotten rid of the hard edges. 
And I'm going to start blending that surface break 